So I'm going to show you this uh, new hex tarp. It's uh, printed. I got it printed. The material from uh, DutchwareGear.com, uh, and it's printed to look like the woods and stuff down in Florida. And um, I, the stuff sack matches, you know, this, the tarp and everything. But it's a 12-foot hex tarp. Uh, I can't remember the exact weight on there. I'll try to put it in the description. Uh, I've already told the person that's getting it what it is, uh, the weight is and everything. But I'm going to set it up now and show it to you. This is in a double-ended stuff sack like our hammocks. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of the double-ended hammocks. They, uh, I don't really see... I mean, double-ended stuff sacks for a tarp. I'm not a fan of that. But it's uh, um, just something I'm trying. And for the person getting this, you'll have a regular stuff sack in the in the box with this so you can just use whichever one you want but for a hammock double ended stuff sack is really advantageous but for tarps uh, maybe not so much so um, the, the first end I'm gonna hook up and this is gonna be uh, I'm gonna have to adjust this and everything when I get it set up I had it set up in the building uh, the the mounts where I hooked it up to are closer than than they are here so I'm going to have to do all the adjusting and everything, just like the person that's getting it, just like you would going from one campsite to the next, you know, with the trees being different. Um, but it's got this uh, little titanium hook. Uh, that's also from DutchwareGear.com. And so on this first side, I'm going to wrap this around the tree and then just take the hook and uh, clip it, clip it into here and it'll, it'll click into place. And that's all I got to do for that end. And then when I get to the other end, I will uh, uh, do the wasp and everything uh, to adjust it. And I've got a separate video out now for for that, uh, uh, showing how the wasp is and how it works. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that in this video. If you want to learn, the, the, the wasp will be at this end. And that's where I'll make my adjustments to get the line tight. And... Uh, if you want to learn more about that, I'll put a link to that video uh, with the Dutchware Gear Wasp uh, at the end of this video. So I'm going to get this set up. And this has a 30 foot long continuous ridge line on it. A lot of people think 30 feet, you know, especially your trees 12 to 15 feet apart, why do you need a 30 foot long ridge line? Well, some trees are really big around and you can use a lot of cord going all the way around it and everything so um i i've not i've never used my full 30 length of cord on on my tarps and different setups i've done but uh came, i've used a lot of it i came pretty close so that's why the that's why the ridge line's so long This is where I was having problems with the double-ended stuff sack. The drawstrings and everything were catching on the net and it was just kind of being a hassle. Okay, and here the wasp is right down there where I'm holding it. It's too close to the tarp. So uh, like in the video I did of using that wasp, I'm having to take the, that and slide it down the ridge line a little bit, get it closer to the tree. Um, that's pretty common to have to do, you know, when you're going from trees that are close together to trees that are far apart. It's pretty quick and easy to do, but 
in the video of using a wasp where I talk about sliding that wasp down the line. That's what I was just doing. Okay, so as you can see, it took a little bit. That double ended stuff sack, um, definitely not a fan of that. Not, not a fan of it for the tarps. Works great for the hammocks, like I said. Um, it's the first time I've used one on a tarp and I was really kind of awkward with it and things getting all fiddled around. Um, so it has Nama claws on each end. I'll take you up there and show, them, show you them. But they're really nice because uh, if you need to shift the tarp down, like um, I'm going to pull it down that way some. I just loosen this end up a little bit. And then I can just bring this in until it tight, tightens up. That's uh, really nice um, to be able to get the tarp centered over your hammock just right and everything. It's real nice and easy. Um, in the past, I've used prussic ropes on, on that spot where the Nama Claw's at, but I, I found that uh, the Nama Claw's work better than prussic, especially when your hands are cold. Okay, so this is the Nama Claw. It's attached to the tarp by this little loop, and uh, this loop has a lark's head tied around the Nama Claw. One thing I found early on when I started using them, if you just have the loop and run it through the Nama Claw, when you're taking it in and out of the stuff sack and all that kind of stuff, it falls off a lot. I've, I've been using the Nama Claws with the Prusik, I mean with the Lark's Head on there for over a year and as many times as I've taken my tarp in and out of the bags, I've never had an issue with it. But this is really easy to use. All you do is, uh, when you want to loosen it, just bend it back like that and you can move it. As soon as you let go, it locks in place and then uh, when it's got tension on it and like now tighten it back up and just let go that's it pretty easy okay so as you can see um, it's in a tube that tube is called a uh, snake skin uh, they have different snake skins they got full length snake skins like that one they've got two piece ones that kind of meet in the middle uh, the two piece ones tend to uh, bulk up the tarp, tarp material right there in the middle um, so I like the solid ones, the, the full length ones. This snake skin is made by Hammock Gear and I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, so now I'm going to take it out and show you how it's done. One nice thing about this is like if it's really windy, I can throw some stakes in, in this part of the tarp right now to kind of keep the tarp under control until I get it out and then I can adjust my stakes and everything. But tonight's, uh, today's, there's no breeze or anything or no really strong wind, so I'll just take it all the way out. And as you can see, the, uh, uh, tarp snake skin just stays on the end of the uh, line just keep it there and then when you're ready to put it back all you do is slide it back over and uh, one really nice thing about this is your tarps not on the ground uh, setting up a tarp any kind of tarp to you know to camp in or whatever uh, while you're setting it up it's it's on the ground it's being drugged across the ground not only is it getting dirty or possibly wet but there's always a chance it can get snagged on something. So having a snake skin is really makes it a lot better. And so now I'll show you what I got for the tie outs. Okay, so got a piece of zingit. This is yellow. It's the same diameter as that ridge line. It's a 1.75 millimeter ridge line. These lines have about 500 pounds of, of strength to them. The person getting this hammock is, uh, man, my beard looks like it's got a hole in it. Um, 
person getting this hammock has uh, doesn't like knots, is not a big fan of it. So my wife, when she made these, she uh, uh, braided a uh, loop in there for your stakes. These have the same Nama claws as the tarp does. And same thing, you know, when you're putting tension this way on it, it locks it in place. But if you, if you bring this up like that, then it can slide freely. And then you let go and it's got tension on it, it locks it back in place. And just as a little extra precaution, the, the end, this end with the loop on it, you know, this thing's not gonna slide off of that end. And as an extra precaution, my wife braided this in a line back inside of itself. So it makes the line fatter here. So this just won't, you know, just fall off the end or anything. It's on there pretty good. So um, you won't have to worry about losing one of these Nama claws when you're, you know, taking down, setting up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna get these, uh, I'm bringing up here closer to the tarp. Uh, well, I'll do one from back here to show you. Then I'll bring you up closer to where I got it. Um, where you can see how I'm hooking it up. Okay, that's it pretty easy and now I'm looking over here you probably couldn't even see what I did dang it <laughs> oh okay let's go up here and show you the other end up close okay so real quick and easy stake you know goes through the hole and I got this up here these line uh, these beastie bees on the end they have a little piece of shock cord and all it does is this hook goes through the shock cord and that's it what the shock cord does is it gives you a little bit of safety if somebody trips over your line or whatever it allows some stretch to possibly tear it keep from tearing your tarp and another thing is a lot of tarps and stuff like that you know you got tension on the shock cord a lot of tarps and stuff uh tends to when they get wet the material kind of stretches so um having this shock cord on there nice and tight it uh when it, even as the tent or tarp starts to stretch it will still keep it tight so that's the other advantage to that so all i gotta do get it about where i need it at put the stake in and then i can tighten it up that's it that's all you got to do okay so I'm gonna get the four corners of this tarp staked out and then I'm going to show you these uh, tie outs here and um, what I did with these is they have a hyper d 300 on as a reinforcement patch on the back side it's sewn to that and then this gross gain ribbon and, and this little uh, buckle is uh, sewn to that reinforcement patch and everything so it's pretty strong and everything I'll show you what these are used for and uh, once I get these rest of the stakes out and I'm going to show you two different ways that I do it um, that that you can do it as I get it set up so I'm going to set up one side one way and the other side the other way but pretty nice looking tarp though that thing is going to look good down in Florida Okay, uh, before I set these up, I'm going to show you how to put these lines on for the person getting getting this. You can leave these lines on all the time, or you can take them off and just use them when you want to. This, of course, is going to pull out the tarp. Um, I, I normally only use these on my tarp in the winter time or when it's a lot of rain or something, when, when the weather's bad. when Because most of the time I have my tarp up in porch mode so one side's up you know and, and uh 
get all that airflow and everything so I don't need these but if the weather is going to be really bad and I want the tarp you know closed down to protect me from the elements then to get a little extra room that's when I do these but all it does you got a, uh, a loop braided on one end and you have a prussic knot here on out here on the side and I'll show you how all this works together So all you do is run that through and then take the rest of the cord, run it through the loop and then pull it down and that's it. It's attached on there. So I'm going to get all these set up and get the pole set up and then show you how this works. Okay, so I got it set up two different ways. Uh, on this side here, I've got the uh, trekking pole and just for reference on the length of the trekking pole, I've got it both sections are out to about where it says stop so that's about how long it is and then on this side i've got i took an old tent uh some poles off an old tent there's three sections of pole there uh folds up really small lightweight you know if i don't want to use trekking poles or something i've got a pair of these um so what it does as you can see pulls it out which is really nice uh when you're in there because it will uh make a lot more room inside of the tarp especially you know the tarp would normally be set up higher um, that's more like down towards your shoulders when the tarps up the height so you're not just constantly every time you're walking through just really pushing out on the tarp and you can pull it out pull this out more and everything but you know just give you a gist of the idea and as you can see there's little square reinforcement patches that are sewn on there um, on each one of them so a couple things about this rope here as you can see it's got the your regular rope and then it's got this prussic loop now this prussic loop whenever i first started doing it on this pole just having a loop um it would slide one way or the other um as the wind started blowing and everything and then like one side would collapse and one i mean drop down and the other side would lift up really high so what i did was i tied a lark's head around here I have a, I think I already said it, but I got a video about doing a lark's head and everything. I'll, I'll post a link to that at the end of this. If these slide, this is a prussic knot. I'm going to be doing a video on them real soon. If this doesn't hold typically on anything with a prussic knot, it's usually one or two things. Prussics work better when the prussic loop is smaller diameter than the rope, which these are. Uh, this is a bigger diameter rope but and so if they're the same diameter they tend to not hold as good but another thing is all these loops if they're all overlapping each other and everything like right now they're pretty neat and side by side but if they're overlapping each other and really sloppy it, it doesn't hold as well so if you find that that's starting to slip because um, the rope sizes are right that's probably what your problem is uh, rope sizes are right on this one now this one here on the trekking pole I was able to just stick the loop over the end of the pole because it's not really got much room to slide and then same thing over here on this handle um, you know it's got it's got plenty there to slide I mean to hold it in place and everything and you could slide it down in here or do whatever you need to do but uh, it holds pretty well and uh, as you can see the ridge line holds the majority of the weight off of it so it's not you really don't have a lot of weight on your tarp um, it's mainly on the ridge line that's one thing I like about the ridge line running over the top of my tarp some people like it under it but I, that's one thing I like about having it over the tarp and speaking of ridge lines and over and under and all that kind of stuff this line right here is actually a, a second it's an internal ridge line works great if you want a little light uh, like just uh, stick your headlamp up there or uh, i got a lucy light i hang for mine you know just anything along that way along that line uh give you a little bit of light and uh it's nice because like if i have it in the middle what you know when i'm doing everything with a hammock and stuff or whatever but if i'm down at one end like i'm just hanging out in the chair i got everything packed up it's raining or whatever you can see that in one of my videos i'm sitting down in my chair at the end of the tarp and I could just slide that light down to where I was at, you know, pretty nice. 
little extra little feature but that is it that is uh like i said two different ways you could do it if you use trek and pulls all the time you know that works great um it, it, normally I, it, you could use your trek and pulls to put it in porch mode and but of course if it's in porch mode you can't do this so you can either use a trek and pulls to put it in porch mode or if you want it down you can use it for that um for somebody that has a tarp that does this or, or ends up buying a tarp that does this, if you don't use trek and pulls or anything, um, getting finding an old tent, you can find a lot of tents at yard sales and everything, find an old tent, take a couple sections of the pole out and it works great too. But that is it. I uh, just want to get a video of this made before I ship it out. Man, that thing looks cool. It looks cool. And, uh, I think I said it before, but the yellow lines make it a little bit, you know, easier to see. So less of a chance of tripping over it and everything. Um, ridge lines, seam sealed on the inside. Uh, seam sealing down here, there's really no sense in it. Because why seam seal it there whenever just an inch away it's raining, you know, water's blowing in and everything. It's just kind of a waste of time and money to seam seal the corners. But the ridge line is seam sealed on the inside should last you a long time hope you enjoy it and uh the person getting this is also getting a custom hammock and that video will come out in a few days after this one but uh, i don't think i forgot anything i think i got it all done on the tie outs i try not to put extra holes in there like i could have done box stitching and all that kind of stuff um, but that's just more holes yeah, these these are seam sealed too. Um, I forgot to mention that ridge line, and these are seam sealed. But just putting more holes in it, and more to seam seal, more to possibly leak gears down the road, whatever. So uh, all I did was uh, straight stitching, at three rows up here, and then three rows down here. Still plenty strong, especially with that hyper D behind it and everything. But uh, less holes in the tarp is better. Oh, and one thing I really like about it. If you can see, when you lay the tarp flat, I got lucky that I didn't, because I didn't think ahead, but I got lucky the way I cut this, this side of the tarp matches almost perfectly with that side of the tarp. Like when it's hanging down, straight down, you'll see when you get this tarp that they match up really, really well. Um, you know, most people, if you when you're using it, you probably wouldn't even notice it anyway, but I just think it was cool it came out like that. I was really happy, and I got lucky. Really lucky. Yeah, I got really lucky because the other printed tarps I've done, um, like hex cam and all that kind of stuff, you know, the, you don't really have anything to match up. So as I was cutting it, I didn't, I wasn't thinking ahead to make it, and it just, just happened to work out like that. So I know now if I ever do a tarp similar like this, you know, to to make a conscious effort to do that. But just got lucky on yours. Anyway, enjoy the tarp. Enjoy the hammock when you get it. We we'll get both of these, and um, send me some pictures. I want to see that tarp down there. As you, as you can see, takedown is pretty easy. Um, I'll show you a little trick about uh, the keeping the line from tangling. On the line up here with your hook, you don't really normally have a whole lot of line. Most of your excess line is down there. Okay, so I, I usually just kind of wrap my tarp around a little bit so I can keep it off the ground. And then when you start out, if you take the rope, allow a little bit of it to go back behind your fingers, between your middle finger and your ring finger, and then start doing a figure eight around your thumb and your pinky. And it uh, gets, a, you avoid a lot of tangles with this cord if you do a figure eight instead of just coiling it in a circle. It works a whole lot better. Less tingles.
and then just you know like anything else just take it and wrap the end you know wrap it around a couple times tuck it inside of itself and uh, should be good to go and what I do is I normally have my normal stuff sack and uh, like this would be the bottom of my stuff sack yeah I'm not a not a fan of these double ended stuff sacks on this try it might like it I don't know so I'd have a normal stuff sack like this and then shove that rope down in there and then just start uh, working your tarp in and then when I get to this end just undo the hook and a lot of times there's just a little piece of uh, cord left between the tarp and the hook so you could more or less just stuff that in the tarp I mean the stuff sack so I think what I'll do is I'll because I'll, I'll, uh, I'm not not been happy with this double ended stuff sack so I will probably ship it to you in a regular stuff sack and then if you want to you can play around with this see if you like it <laughs> 